What, you started how long ago? Uh, around this time in 2018. So five years. In this video, we're going to be going through the European trials run of Joseph Chen while showcasing version 2.0 of the Outlier database, which now has a ton of new features that I'm very excited to show you. And just a reminder, the first 1,000 people that sign up are going to be grandfathered into the $12 a month rate. And there's currently 183 spots remaining. So if you're interested, the link will be in the description below. And let's get into the video. Shh. In his first match of the 2023 ADCC European Trials, Joseph Chen hits a double Kouchi to get a hold of his opponent's leg before dragging them into what we're calling A2. And if you ask Joseph what the secret is to his success, he'll tell you. COVID, COVID. because COVID. I didn't have to do school. I could yeah. just watch instructionals and train. Now, if we hop into the outlier database, we now have sequences. And you can see the sequence started from open guard and ended in a Rimiyashi. And we have that two-on-one ankle grip and that double Kouchi. And we have the note that's generated with this sequence. And we also have training resources associated with it. And if we hop into that training resource, we can see that Gordon Ryan covers a similar sequence in his seated guard instructional. And we get the volume, we get the chapter title, we get the time and a description of that sequence. I bet this is where Joseph learned this technique. This is an incredibly strong two-on-one grip, okay? Um, I actually, this is the same grip I used to pull sideboard back into my Ashigurami test in 17 ADCC. Now Gordon was able to backstep into cross Ashi, but a lot of people are hip to that nowadays. So Joseph adds in a little new school flair by attacking a straight ankle slash Aoki lock on his inside hip, which didn't end up working, but we've seen Joseph have recent success with it. Joseph then uses that same double Kouchi to wrestle up and then displays some beautiful guard passing that was the talk of the Discord server. And we're going to dive more into that later, but for now I want to focus on mount and how Joseph loves this combination of the gift wrap and the wrist pin. And we saw him use it in quintet to get double underhooks and ultimately try an armbar. But that armbar didn't work, and one week later in the trials, he used it to get a second underhook and ultimately take the back. And relatively quickly lock in the rear naked choke finish. Now in his second match, his opponent tries a lateral drop, but it fails and Joseph ends up on top, where he quickly threatens a guard pass resulting in the front headlock. And Joseph takes this front head and arm grip with his hands connected in the armpit, which can be used to threaten a Schultz choke. What is it? The Schultz? I don't know what that is. This was famously done by Matt Hughes to put Ricardo Almeida to sleep. And a big battle that gets this to work is this arm coming closer and closer to the center. So as the arm is drifting closer to the center, Joseph is probably putting strangle pressure on his opponent. And to alleviate this pressure, the answer is pretty simple, right? You just got to bring your arm to the outside, which his opponent does. And Joseph is ready with the second horn of this dilemma and shoots in the high risk guillotine. Now, again, his opponent has good defense and tries to alleviate the pressure, but Joseph rolls with him to maintain the position. And as they come back into the front headlock, Joseph's able to turn the corner and cast his foot over his opponent's leg. So now as they go into a second roll, Joseph crosses his feet and attaches himself to his opponent. And it looks like grip wise his secondary hand is searching for his own elbow similar to what we've seen Placido use in the previous American trials now I'm not sure if he was able to successfully get that grip or not but Joseph did a great job of playing this initial dilemma to get the high wrist position and he's able to follow his opponent's defensive role while he upgrades his position and ultimately gets the finish and if we look at this sequence we can again see that there's a training resource associated with it but this time the training resource is not a technique it's a concept and this concept is one that Gordon talks about in his leg lock instructional. And that is the single roll theory. And in the world of leg locks, it means your opponent gets to roll once. And during that roll, you're upgrading your foot position from Marimiyashi to outside Ashi. And if you have good breaking mechanics from outside Ashi, they should not be able to roll again while you get your finish. And Joseph applied the single roll theory beautifully in his application of the guillotine. His opponent rolled once to alleviate the pressure. And Joseph used that roll to upgrade his position and not allow a second roll, resulting in a strong finish. So now we move on to the third match, which was just a beautiful display of guard passing. 
You can see Joseph has a near side underhook and he's trying to beat the butterfly hook of his opponent. And I think it's important to note that Joseph's head is on the same side that his opponent has the butterfly hook. And as Joseph is trying to step over the butterfly hook, there's a hand in the way and his opponent brings their other leg across to reinforce it. So Joseph uses what's called a top pummel with his other foot to de-stickify that hook and make it easy for Joseph to pass to side control. So here we go again, Joseph has double underhooks and he pikes his hips up into this high tripod position. But this time his head is on the opposite side of his opponent's butterfly hook. And it seems like Joseph uses that head position until he's able to pummel a butterfly hook in of his own. And once he has that in place, he switches his head to the same side as his opponent's butterfly hook. But this time as Joseph is trying to step over the butterfly hook, his opponent just uses their hand and they don't make the mistake of bringing their knee across to help. So Joseph says, no problem, I'm just gonna pummel my foot all the way to knee on belly. But his opponent is briefly able to recover their butterfly hook. So Joseph brings his head to the same side that his opponent has that butterfly hook. And he's able to melt through the guard once again and stabilize and mount. Joseph has a unique style of passing people's butterfly guards. It's a combination of tripod passing and float passing. Now Joseph talks about some different leg pummels that he likes to do in this YouTube video here. And guess where you can find that? In the training resources. But you can see this isn't the only training resource associated with this sequence. We have a game resource. Now, just like many of you are probably doing, I've been experimenting myself with this ecological approach to training. And I thought it would be helpful to see the games people are coming up with and playing to help develop their skills. So if you're diving into this ecological approach and want to see some games, you can go over here and click on training resources. And maybe you're just interested in free training resources, so you can check this box. And then you can filter by game. Right now, this is the only one we have in the system, but it's the games that I came up with to help develop this skill of high tripod body lock passing. Now from Mount, his opponent escapes once again and he has a butterfly hook. So Joseph leaves his head on that same side. But once he beats that butterfly hook, his opponent's able to bring in their other butterfly hook. So Joseph switches his head to the same side as that butterfly hook and steps over it into Mount. And from Mount, it's the same story. He plays the gift wrap with the wrist pin to take the back and ultimately ends up winning on points. But now, things start to get real because Joseph has to go through this murderous row of Mateusz Szczynski, Tommy Langlacker, and Oliver Taza. I had, I believe, three or four matches before Mateusz, and it was Mateusz Langlacker and Taza. And seeing that, I was like, I, I couldn't really think about it all at once. I had to take it one at a time. So first things first, he has Mateusz Szczynski, who in my opinion is undisputably the scariest person to grapple in the world today. Mateusz looking like an absolute serial killer. And Mateus starts the match by pulling guard and bringing his foot to the outside of Joseph's left leg. And from here, Mateus likes to set up his attacks from K-Guard, where he can enter into outside Ashi. Invert through and wrestle up. Attack triangles, attack arm bars. There's a lot of attacks that come off of Mateus getting a hold of your far leg. And Joseph does a good job of denying him that leg and forcing Mateus to go into attacks on his near leg. And it seems like that was a deliberate game plan going in. Matus goes for his shotgun, Aoki lock on his opponent's left feet. So he kept that left foot way out of range, avoided any danger. We can see here Mateus applying the Aoki lock to the left leg of William Tackett. And Joseph Chen has had his own left leg on the receiving end of this Aoki lock as well. So he made sure to keep that left leg away and force Mateus to attack the right leg. And he does so by inverting underneath. And that inversion causes Joseph to pummel his left foot in to defend. And now Mateus has exactly what he wants, control over that left leg. We saw him do this exact same thing to Jed Hugh, where he goes into this Barambolo type inversion on the right leg. And as Jed uses that left leg to defend, Mateus gets a hold of it. And when Mateus gets a hold of your left leg, it can end the match very quickly and you're probably going to get injured. I jump for his back and he kind of pummel his leg back. So I combine my back takes with my leg locks. So every time they try to defend my back, I go back to the leg. So this is what you saw. 
So if you're Joseph and you know this guy has broken your left foot before, and the whole game plan was to keep him away from your left foot, and not even 30 seconds into the match, he now has a hold of it. This must have been extremely difficult for Joseph to mentally overcome. I was super nervous all the way on the lead up to uh, Mateus. Because I was not only scared I was going to lose, I was scared I was going to get hurt. But the last time, it was a significant injury. So this, in my opinion, is a very critical moment in the match. And what Joseph did surprised me very much. He attacked Mateus with a straight ankle lock of his own, which is extremely impressive and a very clear sign that Joseph is not here just to take part. That boy here to take over the game. Now here, in my opinion, is where we get to see Joseph's strategy in full. Step one, we already know, which is make it very difficult for Mateus to get a hold of this left leg. And a great way to do that is by monitoring this leg and making it very difficult for Mateus to be effective with it. And we know Mateus likes to use the Barambolo, but if we can stay low and control this outside leg, it's going to force Mateus into a much wider inversion than he would like. If Ed blocks my delta, if he pushes this delta heaver leg off, I'll often just continue with the, the move and that's actually okay. But it's a real problem if he blocks my top leg and even if you swing wide, it's a bad idea. Okay, so we're not going to do that. And after that wide swing, Joseph now brings his attention to clearing that long De La Hiva hook. And he's able to come very close to passing the guard. But Mateus does a beautiful job of inverting and entering into K-guard on the right leg of Joseph. And tries to threaten a triangle, but Joseph avoids it and they reset. So again, if we look at this sequence, we can see there's a training resource associated with it. And it's a technique shown by Lachlan Giles. And it's a potential solution to someone doing a good job of controlling your far leg when you're trying to do a barambolo. We're just going to bring our shin underneath the leg. So we're going to do like a bolo on the spot and not go deep with our bolo. I'm going to spin underneath and I'm going to work into the crab ride position. But this is Mateus's A game and you can bet he has some tricks of his own to deal with this resistance. And what he does is keep that barambolo much more shallow, just as Lachlan recommended in the training resource video. You can see off of the first inversion, Mateus's leg is all the way behind Joseph's back. But on this second inversion, everything is very tight and very compact and very shallow, which allows him to enter an octopus style guard and threaten the back of Joseph. But again, I can't stress this enough, the composure from Joseph during this match is unreal. And like we've talked about many times on this channel, if you're on the underhook side and they have a high ball ride, then it should be relatively easy for you to turtle. And that's what Joseph does and he's able to shake Mateus off. So now Mateus says, okay, we're in the points period and Joseph is playing the strategy that requires him to lean way back. So I'm gonna wrestle up. But in my opinion, it's extremely difficult to complete the wrestle up and take top position if you're still holding this reverse De La Hiva grip. And you can see Mateus as he's wrestling up, trying to switch the grip on the leg. But Joseph is able to keep top position. It's very similar to what happened to Mateus in last year's ADCC event against Dante where he's trying to wrestle up with that reverse De La Hiva grip and switch his grip on the way up. But man, it's just tough, especially when they have control over your other leg. But he still has one trick up his sleeve and that is the arm drag. And he uses this arm drag to threaten the back of Joseph once again. But Joseph was able to defend and reset. And multiple times throughout the match, Joseph was able to counter the Barambolo, clear that long De La Hiva hook, and threaten the guard pass. And ultimately, the overtime period ended with Mateus looking like he was just trying to force that Barambolo inversion. And Joseph is able to clear that long De La Hiva hook, threatening a guard pass, and forcing the front headlock. And you gotta think the blueprint for this strategy came from studying Mateus' match against Dante at ADCC. Do you think it's a good idea to study film? I'm learning that now, it's, it is a good idea, yes. <laughs> Where Dante was forcing that wide inversion and trying to beat that long De La Hiva hook. He was preventing Mateus from wrestling up and forced overtime where he had a huge advantage in wrestling. And Joseph executed this same strategy to perfection and ultimately he's able to beat Mateusz Szczynski and the crowd goes crazy. But Joseph immediately has to go in and face Tommy Langacker. But right off the bat, Joseph is attacking the guard and threatening some serious guard passes, which is not what he was doing against Mateusz at all. So it seems like he's starting to loosen up a bit and play his game. The Mateusz match, man, it was, for me, it was mentally very difficult. After that, I felt very relieved and I felt more excited and more looking forward to the next matches. Obviously, still nervous, but not nearly as much. 
and what we saw was Joseph getting back to that near side underhook, putting his head on the same side as his opponent's butterfly hook and trying to step over it. But Tommy had a scoop grip on this near side, and there's a battle between the near side underhook and the scoop grip, and Tommy was able to win that battle and enter into reverse X guard. But as we saw in Quintet, Joseph is very comfortable engaging in these types of guards. and he's able to do the same thing with Tommy and get right back to his high tripod passing. And it feels like he should just be able to sweep Joseph right over the top, but when he tries, it's shockingly difficult. And Joseph uses it as an opportunity to pass to Mount, just as points come into play and he's able to take an early lead. He puts himself in this position where you on bottom think you're gonna be able to sweep him, but you can't sweep him. And when you try to, he uses that as opportunity to pass. As Tommy recovers his butterfly hook, he does so with Joseph still having that near side underhook and his head on the same side as the butterfly hook. So the guard is short lived and Joseph passes once again to mount and gets another three points before taking the back and holding off a final surge from Tommy and winning the match 9-0. So now as if it were a movie, we have representatives from the B team and New Wave competing in the final. And Taza's game plan throughout the tournament seems to be pretty clear. From standing or top position, he's usually looking to enter into cross Sashi. And from Krasashi, he is very dangerous. Just look at this scene here. We have Taza that looks like he's on a mission. We have this poor gentleman here that looks like he just got his leg broken. And then we have the ref wearing an eye patch. It's a scary scene if you're Joseph Chen, but he has a strategy. Our idea was that we're going to try work on the feed and try stay on top. If I can stay on top, I feel very confident from there. So. The game plan was staying there and then just preparing for him to turtle because Taz is turtled and back defense is very good. So just timing when I threaten a good guard pass, he's going to turtle and follow. Now, I think a lot of good insights come from interviews just like this or podcasts like Craig Jones talking about how Joseph's plan was to keep his left leg away from Mateus. And I thought it would be really helpful for these clips to be included with the training resources. So if you filter by strategy, you're going to see these clips, which gives us insight into Joseph's strategy behind facing Taza and Mateus Shizinski. But diving back into the Taza match, Joseph's strategy is step one is get on top and he's able to counter Taza's foot sweep with a single leg. Step two is to force Taza to turtle and he does that beautifully throughout the match. And if you haven't figured it out already, the man does his homework. Techniques that I stole to win European trials. This technique was actually used by Lucas Lepre in 2019 ADCC against Lachlan Giles. I'm not as good as Lucas Lepre, that's why I stole it. From here, I did a shoulder roll over my left shoulder. And then from here, I rolled over to get behind. Unfortunately, it didn't work, but it looked very cool. And again, just as in his previous match against Mateus, it looked like Joseph did a beautiful job throughout the match of sticking with the game plan. He was threatening guard passes, forcing Taza to turtle and trying to capitalize. And to be honest, he pretty much dominated Taza throughout the regulation period, but he's not able to score any points. So we go into the overtime period where Taza shoots in on a double leg and Joseph counters with an Uchimata. And it seems like the whole crowd is on Joseph's side, including Mateus. And Joseph tries to ride that momentum and backstep into cross Ashi. But this is legitimately Taza's favorite move most likely and he's able to counter it and threaten the back of Joseph. And Mateus cannot believe it. But after they reset, Joseph pulls off one of the craziest reversals. So part two of techniques that I stole to win trials. I stole this from Nikki Rada. You want to win trials, empty your balls. Now I can go to the head and from here, I pull myself up and start looking to come up into this position. And I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but just to hammer it home one last time, both the Lucas Lepre and Nikki Rod Instagram clips from Joseph Chen are gonna be in the training resources. And the idea is if you wanna learn how to do a sequence like this, there should be training resources linked with that sequence to help you develop that skill. And after Joseph pulls off this crazy escape, he takes the bat, gets three points, wins the match and punches his ticket to ADCC in 2024. It was truly an incredible performance that we can all learn a lot from. And I think one of the coolest aspects of it is that Taza's there to show his respect. And Mateus walked all the way over to be one of the first people to congratulate Joseph as well. And I'm sure that meant a ton to Joseph because I can pretty much guarantee you that he's spent a lot of time studying Mateus and incorporating that nasty Aoki lock into his game. 
So overall, just a super exciting event, and I'm very much looking forward to the rest of the trials and the ADCC event in 2024. And if you're interested in the Outlier database, the link will be in the description below, and I'll see you in the Discord.